Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson and Tony Sukalis. We're finally at number one in our top 40 countdown. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching all of our videos. Please like and subscribe. Today, we're talking about the number one most impactful player for Alabama, um, Dylan Moses, back for his redshirt junior season, six foot three, 235 pounds, missed last year with the ACL, tremendous loss for Alabama. Talk about the importance of Dylan Moses to not only the defense, but to this entire team, Tony. Yeah, I mean, you, to understand the importance of, of Dylan Moses, all you have to do is look at last year when when they were there without him, you know. And I, I think if you would have had Dylan Moses on last year's team, I think you probably win a national championship. I think I think it, it was that close on a lot of these games, and I think he would have made the difference. He's a Buckers Award finalist. He's a guy that's a born leader at that defensive position, and he's going to be the perfect Mike linebacker. And really why he's going to be impactful, he'll probably lead Alabama in tackles and he'll provide some pass rush and might, might net some interceptions. But the real impactfulness that, that Dylan Moses is going to bring is the stability and, and the presence that he'll have on the field with some of these younger defenders. They're going to basically use him as a, as a safety net. You know, I mean, if you look at, at Christian Harris, right, he's coming into a second year with the program, he'll probably be the will linebacker. And he's a guy I expect to already show some improvement. But when you look at, you know, him next to Dylan Moses, I think it's just – it's going to amplify him that bit – that much more, you know. And I think I think you're going to see an extra confidence by anyone that, that Dylan, you know, kind of touches. And it's like with him out there, I think people are going to be less afraid to make mistakes. If they're unsure of something, they're going to check with him. And then, you know, obviously from, from a talent standpoint, he's going to excel on the field as well. Tony, how, how... – happy does Pete Golding have to be having Dylan Moses come back? I mean, last year he has two freshman inside linebackers. Now he gets Dylan Moses. I mean, it, we were at SEC Media Days, and they had Dil Dylan Moses last year. And I'm up there watching him, and I, I just cannot believe how articulate, how smart the young man is. I mean, a total born leader, like you said, um, the, the complete leader of the defense, and then Alabama loses him, a big blow. But Pete Golding has to be thrilled and, and – you know, just really, um, you know, just completely happy that he's coming back for, for this season, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I, when you talk about his leadership ability, I mean, you might as well give the kid a, a team captain, a, you know, honor right now because you know he's going to win it. You know, you know his teammates are going to name him that. He's going to be the leader of the defense, that, that Mike position. I also think it's going to benefit the fact that Alabama's uh, linebackers were thrown into the fire. So now they've got their feet wet with everything. I think they'll be even, you know, They'll have a little bit they'll, – they'll improve themselves. So that, you know, being able to pair that with, with Dylan, I think you're going to see a lot of improvement in the middle of the field for Alabama. And, and that's, that's really important when you look at it, you know. So um, it all starts in that center and then you build outwards. So, you know, he's going to be the heart of this defense. And, and I think, that you know, it's a young defense in a lot of areas. And I think having him early in the season is going to really help them get through and weather the storm. And then by the end of – the year, you know, Alabama's hope is that everything's all clicking. In 2018 and 15 games played, Dylan Moses had 86 tackles with three sacks. In 2017, he had 30 tackles. Again, in 2019, um, missed with the ACL. Um, I talked about this before when we talked about Christian Harris, but the fact that um, I find this very interesting, Dylan Moses and Christian Harris, both from Louisiana, uh, Baton Rouge, um, you know, Devontae Smith, we also talked about him, also from Louisiana. I mean, these guys from Louisiana certainly come into play, but I think, like you said, and let's touch, touch on this a little bit more, just the fact that now Christian Harris can really look to Dylan Moses for that leadership, you have to think that that just completely um, builds a lot of stability within that middle middle of the field at the linebacker position yeah it's kind of funny you know last offseason you know probably a week or so before Dylan gets hurt he, you know um uh, you know Joshua McMillan got hurt so we were we were asking him about Christian Harris and you know how is he progressing is he going to be ready and one of the things that Dylan said was you know he, he would tell Christian just go out there do your job play as fast as you can if, it, if you have a problem or if you don't know something just ask me you know and I'll be on the field I'll be able to set you right and obviously that wasn't the case because, you know, a couple of weeks later, uh, Dylan himself gets hurt for the season. But like I, like I said before, I, th I think having that reassurance and just Dylan Moses might not even have to say anything. It's just, you know, maybe, maybe he will, maybe he won't. But him being on the, on the field uh, is just going to kind of put people at ease and, and um, you know, allow players to play faster and not second guess themselves. 
Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And when you put together this list and I saw the list and I saw who was number one, um, I knew it would be Dylan Moses just because um, not only from a leadership standpoint, but I think his overall playing ability. Um, I mean, 86 tackles in 2018. I mean, I, I would assume that he's somewhere around that point during the 2020 season. Um, we hope you've enjoyed our top 40 countdown. Let us know in the comment box what you think about Dylan Moses and how impactful he'll be for the 2020 season. Um, great list, Tony. You, you did a great job with this. Um, it's been fun. I mean, we're finally through. Um, I mean, you get to that top 10 in Alabama, even the top 20. I mean, it, it's an embarrassment of riches with the amount of talent that Alabama has, right? It was tough. It was tough putting this to get this list together. If you, if you don't agree, sound off in the comments. You know, I, I you know went back and forth with with you, Kyle. I went back and forth with Tyler. Tyler Tyler Waldrip, you know, one of our writers, really did a lot to help me put this together. This list as well. Um, and it's just you know, I, I keep on going back to impactfulness. And so if you think someone's ranked a little bit lower, I, I might be wrong. You know, heck, I was looking back, you know, the other day and. Um, we had Devonte Smith ranked 24th last year, so obviously we have some misses. You know, I mean, he's you know he's ranked fifth this year. Um, it was a fun list to get together, but it was also really challenging when you're trying to you know decide between player X and player Y, and you know who's above who. It it it, it was a challenge for sure. Um, but anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this series, and um, thank you for liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time on BamInsider.com. For Tony Sukalis, Kyle Henderson, thanks for watching BamInsider.com.